Hey guys, Sven here with a new Northcast market update titling the, the obvious title, Decision Time in this market, February 26, 2023. Want to give you just some high level perspectives here in terms of what's going on. I had shown you this before, February 3rd, from our private stream. With the view was we were going to have some sort of back test as markets were becoming very overbought into critical resistance. And Maybe it's like, be careful what you wish for and everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Be careful what you wish for because the original view here was obviously we're gonna tag this and then there would be some sort of bounce from this general area. And back then there was the uh, 3957 area, which was the 200 MA in, at the time that evolved downwards a f bit further into 3940 and we had 3943 on Friday before a bit of a bounce uh, but just to highlight how this chart has played out so far which is I would say perfectly the only question is now what if you're wrong here and this all falls apart well the bullish view was based on on the basic structure that says okay here's a potential cup and handle and, and as you guys may know I've been tracking this since the December lows then we had the technical breakout and then this would be considered your back test and remember everybody declared the bear market over and the new bull market you know is is in place and since then obviously we've we've tanked but this is the decision point now if this is it to be a bull market and these bullish patterns to be valid then a back test a technical back test would have to produce a massive rally which could fail and uh, given the very difficult and uncertain macro construct i'll talk about this in a moment as well uh, but technically this has the view i always had the view this could go all the way up into 4400 or so and then all these scenarios to be determined and discussed as the macro and technicals evolve but then there's of course the chance this all falls apart and this gets invalidated and that's the you know everybody has a trade plan until they get punched in the face now my view was generally we were structurally very overbought and that sentiment would shift rather dramatically once we have that back test and we would no longer be overbought and all that is true as well because we're seeing some very much over uh, sold signals now but here note this was the chart I showed you about the battle of control why the pullback made sense off of that monthly 20 MA we didn't quite get to it but we got close to it and so all of a sudden everybody has to stare that reality in the face that yes maybe this could happen but if this does happen it needs to also produce new lows which obviously we don't have at this point but it's clearly a concern for bulls and it would be encouraging for bears and here's just maybe just a quick highlight in terms of the irony of it all the pattern we had last year was that every move above the monthly five ema every monthly close above the five ema was immediately uh, or immediately resulted in a rejection of the five ema and the following month was then a negative move okay this is this is what we saw here here and here and even here, right? So even into the tail end of the year. And so beginning of the year, we closed above it. Here's February and we got two trading days left. And guess what? Where well, we closed on Friday, right? Smack on the middle of the monthly five EMA. So one way to argue this is to say, hey, if bears want to control this pattern or continue this pattern, we need to close below the monthly five EMA. Fair enough. And likewise, bulls will want to show a second close above the monthly five EMA. That's why the next two trading days will kind of rather be of interest, right? Because we got two trading days left in the month. So in this context, how ironic that they're leaving the decision point literally to the end of the month. Seasonality, I talked about this. Uh, my view generally is, you know, given this is a pre-election year so far, directionally, and again, don't look at levels, but rather just a directional flow. Uh, what we've seen so far this year is pretty consistent. So unless this starts deviating, I my view is kind of stay respectful of it. And it did call for a end of February pullback. And then it says a rip higher in March. Well, I guess we're about to find out if this deviates or not i'll just leave that out there quick con context on macro it is just really i would say intellectually insulting on some level what we're seeing right now by these fed speakers that keep pushing the soft landing narrative and they're doing it every single day while they're now being forced into higher 
rates because inflation is proving to be so much more sticky. But this is what we got on Friday. We had five Fed speakers on Friday. Soft landing is feasible. Optimistic soft landing can be achieved. Yellen says, you know, whatever some economists say about a recession is needed to combat inflation with high unemployment. She doesn't want to believe that. Well, this is she's responding to this, which is a study that came out that, yeah, that's what I've been saying for a long time. You actually typically need a recession to get rid of inflation on a structural basis. It happened in the 70s, happened in the 80s. But that's not what they do. They, they keep peddling the soft landing narrative, which is exactly what they did in 2007, all year long, even into early 2008, right? And don't forget, and this is really important, because they keep doing that, they're also adding to a sense of complacency because they're you know while we're raising these rates into these high debt construct we are also uh then you know enticing basically a, a false sense of security complacency and people buy stocks and don't forget that's exactly what happened in 2007 we even made new all-time highs and that is something that i think everybody needs to be mindful of as well because these are big macro wheels that are turning and so while they are now dealing with sticky inflation and, and rising rates uh, as it's not really come down the way they wanted it to at this point uh, we are now faced a situation where this all could get very ugly and i'll just give you two examples here you know this this is what people have been ignoring uh in the last few weeks as they were buying stocks and that is the dollar was rising again and you can argue that bulls really need a reversal of this dollar uh, it is getting overbought. It's in a really tight pattern here. And this decision will come also next week, which the correlation is incredible. And if you're not paying attention to this, you're kind of missing out. When did the, and this is what I did here, is I inverted the S&P vis-a-vis the U.S. dollar to give you a sense of the relationship. When did the S&P peak in February? On the same day the dollar bottomed. Okay, and all this chop that we had was in relation to the dollar, and now the dollar broke out to new highs, and that got us that new low on the S&P on Friday as it backtested the, um, the breakout zone. So it's really critical for bulls to see a reversal in the dollar. Otherwise, this, all these bullish setups and backtests could fall apart, and the same is true for yields. Here, too, we have a really tight structure that is getting overbought and as you can say you know this this is coming to a resolution here pretty uh, shortly in the in the days ahead so i'll leave you with this macro chart on and and i'll just use a high level here what is the the history the history every single time is the fed is in a rate hiking cycle the yield curve inverts and then ultimately it uninverts and then we have a recession, the Fed panic cuts rates, and that's when you see the structural lows in markets. But during this time period of the uninverted yield curves and the rate cut a rate hiking cycle continuing or even pausing, you can still have massive market rallies, right? And that's, I think, the macro and technical challenge for 2023 as we still have these lag effects going through. And that's why you can argue the backtest could be successful which we don't know the answer to it yet, but if it is, then you have room for these bullish patterns to work out. So that's that's the challenge now here that we're seeing in, in markets. As you can see, clean tag of the 200 MA and the back test on the daily. At the same time, we have this rising wedge, which looks to be threatening to be broken here. So very important what happens next week. Here's the weekly chart. You have the, the weekly 150 MA that was tagged on Friday as well. And we're down three weeks in a row, and we're at a critical technical junction. How we are approaching all this, I'm outlining in our market videos this weekend. And obviously, we have the daily services with the technical alerts. I've made two videos public today um, from last year. This was the sell case here in January. This was the buy case in October, just to give you a sense on how we're approaching this in detail. And we just put out a new market video out as well. Uh, today. So hope this is all helpful. No next week's going to be a wild one again. Uh, are the lows in? I don't have a confirmation of a low yet. There are still some lower risk rate levels we're looking at as well in context of knowing that pokes below can be possible uh, as they are on the upside. So nothing's confirmed. 
but I sense by early March we have a clear sense on how this battle of control is playing out. So be sharp. Next week's going to be another uh, wild one. Are the lows in? We'll find out. They may be in. They may not be in. And if they're not, then things can get obviously a lot more volatile uh, in the meantime. But if, if we do see a confirmed bottom, then these bullish patterns continue to have room to run uh, into March, April. So it's going to be it's going to be a very decisive time here in markets in the next few days. Hope that's helpful. You guys take care.